okay, so let's talk about gas masks and dangerous myths around gas masks that could be very bad for your health indeed. Uh, so this is myths, misconceptions, all these sort of things. So um, obviously some of these I will have talked about before, but I think a lot of them are important to reiterate and, you know, I've not actually done it in a context like this before. So here's a World War II gas mask. If you've watched these videos for a while or know much about gas masks, you know, do not don't wear a World War II gas mask if it has a filter on because those filters contain asbestos. We now know that Soviet gas masks, most of their filters contained asbestos. So, you know, don't use a gas mask filter unless you know what's in it. But there's a lot of points to be made about gas mask filters. So, um, one of the things you'll see a lot is where people don't really know what a filter filters because you get different types of filters. Each filters different types of things, or best case scenario, you get a combination filter that can filter lots of different types of, you know, particulate and vapor threats. However, you know, as I say, not all filters do exactly the same thing. So if you are going to be using a mask for a serious purpose, you need to know exactly what that filter does. So, you know, you can actually be able to uh, get something that will protect you. Um, and this is another thing which lots of films and things like that get wrong. As I said, you should never base your understanding of things from films. But in lots of films, they have... Um, so some of you have a gas mask on, say it's one of these, it could be anything. And they're in an area that's meant to have really high carbon monoxide or something. They've got this mask on, they're absolutely fine. Um, but actual gas mask filters don't stop carbon monoxide. Now, as far as I understand it, you can get filters that stop very low levels of carbon monoxide, but they don't supply you of oxygen. And this is a thing loads of films get wrong, I've ranted about this before. But a gas mask itself, with a filter on, if you have it set up as an air purifying respirator, it only cleans the air coming through the mask. It cannot supply you with air or oxygen. Um, but lots of films and games get this wrong. They'll have a guy with a gas mask on, he's in an environment with no air, or something that's very, very, you know, hazardous that the filter wouldn't be able to protect you from, and they're absolutely fine. In reality, you would need an air-supplied respirator, so what a firefighter might wear, for example, or a rebreather set up, um, and then you've got something, you know, set up that can actually protect you from um, various threats or no air. Um, because the way of thinking about it is, if you're wearing a mask that provides you with oxygen, you can be in a really nasty environment, it doesn't matter if there's no air or the air is incredibly poisonous. As long as that air is clean air is coming from, you know, some sort of self-contained unit, then it's fine. If you're using an actual filter, that filter has to be able to filter out what's in the air. And if there's no air, a filter can't filter out no air. Um, so, you know, that's a bit of a problem. So that's one of the things, uh, you know, I've complained about before. And on the subject of filters, I'll just bring this up again. You do need a filter on a gas mask for it to work. Um, I've seen lots of videos, funnily enough, where people are showing off masks but they don't have any filters on them. Or, as I've said, films where the people in the films aren't wearing filters on the gas mask. Um, and I've had people ask me about that. What does the gas mask itself filter? Not really anything. The filter unit is the actual bit that filters. The gas mask is just to hold it all together. You know, stop air getting in to make a seal of your face. But the filter itself does the work. If you were around something that was irritant, but not deadly through skin contact, in theory, if you had a filter, you could put the filter into your mouth and breathe through the filter without a mask, and it would still, in theory, work. Um, but obviously the mask makes everything much more convenient because it stays strapped to your face, makes an airtight seal, you know, all that sort of thing. So, that's obviously things to consider. And this is something I've complained about loads of times, but I need to mention it again. Filters expire. Now, if you had a ABEC P3 filter and it expired, the particulate bit's still going to work for absolutely ages because particle filters can't really expire. Um, but obviously, the activated carbon and everything else can stop working. And if a filter stops working, it's no good to you. But, you know, lots of people um, will make out, especially if they're trying to sell second-hand filters, um, that, you know, filters never expire and are always good. That is not true at all. A filter, you know, has lots of components to it, and with activated carbon, over time that breaks down, clumps up, you know, stuff like that. Of course, if it's not been exposed to anything, it should last longer than the expiry date. As I've mentioned lots of times, filter dates are indefinite. 
So that doesn't mean infinite. What indefinite means is they don't actually really know when it expires. So they put, you know, a date stamp on where they know it will still be good within that date stamp, but after that you're taking a gamble. If it's only against something that's a bit irritant, then that's fine. If it doesn't work fully or it works to a limited capacity. Um, but if it's something that's life-threatening, obviously, you're not going to want to gamble your life on an expired filter. So obviously, as I said, make sure you have the right filter for the job and the filters in date if it's something serious. Make sure that you know you know where your oxygen is coming from and you've actually got a filter on the mask. Another thing is about filter face, uh, not filter face seals, mask face seals. How well the mask attaches to your face. Because you need a mask that has a really good fit to actually, you know, uh, protect you. Um, you can't just get any old mask in any size and hope for it to work. It doesn't work like that. Some masks are very good in terms of you can get one that's not quite the right size for you and it will still make a good face seal because of how the mask's designed. Others like the um, West German M65 is a good example of this. There, It's a very good mask technically, but the inner mask isn't that good. So once you put it on your face, unless your face shape is like the exact size of the mask and you do the straps up tight, you normally have an air leak in it. As I've shown in videos, you can do a pressure check where you put your hand over the filter intake, breathe in. If the mask compresses, you've got an airtight seal. However, if there is very small gaps, sometimes it will still compress, but you will still get air coming in. Um, another thing as well is be clean shaven while wearing a mask. Now, depending on the model of mask, this might vary a little bit. But in general, you, know, you can't really have a beard or a moustache, although, as I said, it will vary on the mask. Ideally, you should have all your hair shaved off to, you know, provide a best fit. Your eyebrows can stay, that's all right. But, um, you know, that's another thing with films and things where people have beards and that, and they just put on a gas mask and it works. If you have a beard and you needed a gas mask in an emergency and you put on, you're probably screwed. So um, that's another thing is make sure you are, you know, cleanly shaven and everything else. Just simply because if the mask doesn't make an airtight seal, you're, you know, you're doomed, aren't you, if there's um, some serious event. Um, and another thing is obviously, this isn't so much as something that films and that get wrong, but it's sort of a bit of a thing a lot of people don't think about. If you are carrying a gas mask for your safety and intend to use it, you need to know where it is at all times and actually be carrying it. Um, what they did in Britain during World War II is you'd get a fine if you weren't carrying your gas mask on you. Like now again, a warden might ask to see your gas mask, so you'd have to show it them. So they knew you had it on you at all times. If not, you get a fine. That fine was an incentive, so people would carry it and you know actually be able to save themselves. There was a good propaganda poster that says Hitler will send no warning. Carry your gas mask because you know the enemy, if they're going to attack you, isn't going to actually broadcast that you're going to need your gas mask in advance in terms of a gas attack. So. You know, if you are going to carry a mask or are serious about having a mask for self-defence protection sort of thing, you need to make sure you even know where it is if it's at home very quick to get out and put a new filter on it. Or you need a sort of carry bag set up which you can have with you at all times. I think Israel does a similar thing where you have to have a gas mask and carry it uh, to some degree. You know, and again, I assume you can get a fine for that if you don't because that's the good way of teaching people they must have it on them. Um... But I think that mostly sums up this video. But as I've said before, and I'll have to stress it again, films and games are not necessarily a good, you know, realistic sort of place to get your views on gas masks from. Um, you know, films and games definitely seem to mix up respirators and air supplying respirators and things like that. Um, you know, so one thing doesn't do all the different things. But as I said, you know, a gas mask isn't going, if it's in a zero oxygen environment, it's not going to provide you with oxygen, but lots of people seem to think it, you know, makes oxygen somehow. Um, so yeah, make sure you have one on you at all times if you're serious about carrying it for protection. Make sure you have filters that are in date, that are the right kind for what you want. And know what the limitations of the mask are. There are just so many people I speak to in the comments or I see in videos that just assume they can buy any old mask and it will work fine without doing any research into filters when the mask is around. As I've said before, a mask being old doesn't mean it won't work, but they're more prone to failure and newer masks generally have better features. But I have done videos if you are interested in masks I'd recommend that you can find rarely che uh, fairly cheaply as surplus. Um, you know, because I've said before, GP5s, as much as a lot of them still work fine and they're dirt cheap, the issue is they have GOST filters, not NATO filters. And the GOST filters cost more for the working decent ones. 
and all the ones they come with are the asbestos ridden, you know, like commie junk filters. As much as they'd have worked at the time, you know, they're no good now, so don't buy a mask, you know, of that regard. As sort of, I'm sort of been trying to mention that you need to find filters for a mask that I'd buy, personally, I would buy a mask that is slightly less comfortable but where I can get filters readily available and cheaper rather than spending a lot more on the mask and then finding I can't get filters easily for it. You know, that sort of way around. Um, or, as I was saying, spend a lot more on a mask to get a good filter, if that makes sense, where you can get the filters easily. As I said to people before, if you get a full face 3M mask from a hardware store for somewhere between 60 and 100 pounds or dollars, those full face 3M masks you will find the filters very easily because they're an industrial standard filter. It's not like trying to buy an old CBRN filter online and hoping you can find one that's gone into the surplus market but is still in date. But there you go. Hopefully this hasn't been too long-winded and you, although you might have heard of a lot of this before, hopefully it's clarified some things. But yeah, know what a gas mask can and can't do because otherwise, you know, it's no good to you.